Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining us today for this latest edition of eWeek eSpeaks. It's our series of conversations with IT thought leaders from every corner of the business. Our interviewee today is Asim Razak. Asim is the um, CEO and co-founder of a company called Yoda Scale um, and based in the East Bay of California in the Hayward Hills. And uh, Asim, welcome to our interview. Thank you, Chris. Thank you for having me. And um, uh, tell me a little bit about uh, your, a little bit about your background. And I know you have a really great background with eBay and PayPal, and how that led to uh, you helping co-found Yodascale. Sure. So, Chris, before uh, uh, founding Yodascale, I was a senior director of engineering, head of uh, head of uh, platform for uh, PayPal. And what that means is that my teams were responsible for all core infrastructure. So anything that did logins or payments, if you ever logged into PayPal and made a payment, uh, it would all hit uh, the core infrastructure that, that my teams were responsible for. And in my tenure there, I also managed big data, which, was, which is when it was eBay, PayPal, Skype, and was really brought in to uh, help with the third wave of growth of PayPal, which is a developer platform, which we were lucky enough as a core team to build from uh, effectively zero to multi-billion dollars in payments volume. And as, as part of all these initiatives, uh, I had to run infrastructure at scale. And so ended up uh, building the PayPal uh, private cloud and uh, a lot of other infrastructure that uh, is required for manageability of uh, of platform at that, uh, at that scale. And prior to that, early stage, mid stage, uh, late stage uh, startup uh, experience as a, as an engineering lead and leader, uh, primarily around uh, uh, software platform and infrastructure. Okay, and how did that get you to Yoda Scale? Um, Yoda Scale, uh, you told me, has been in business for about five years now. You're mm -hmm. venture backed. Uh, what led you to the genesis of that company? Yeah, so a lot of uh, startups uh, that are founded by technical founders like me, it's it's basically you have you experience the problem or the challenge, and for me, I've seen all the variations of uh, of uh, platform. Um, sorry, I'm gonna just. Uh, I've seen um, in in my career, I've seen the evolution of uh, infrastructure, all the way from uh, application service provider to SaaS to infrastructure as a service to platform as a service, serverless. And of course, uh, public cloud computing has been a key entrant since uh, around 2007 when AWS came up with uh, S3 as a core service. And so as a, as a head of infrastructure, I've had my love-hate relationship, if you will, with public cloud computing, which is it's easy to get in. There's a lot of agility. There's a lot of flexibility. And it can be a key driver for your business, especially if you're growing at scale. Uh, and But on the other hand, just making the economics work and making the operational aspects of it work is very, very difficult. So uh, the, 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 the problem has shifted from CapEx when you were in the data center world to OpEx, which is now you rent machines. So, so that's, that's been a key challenge that I have, I have experienced and uh, a lot of other companies experience. So that led to the, to the founding of Euroscale because I wanted to solve a problem with people who are, who are in my shoes, which are uh, heads of platform engineering that are making the, the cloud computing available to the rest of the organization. And, and also don't wanna effectively run the company into the ground by spending too much. Okay, very good. So you have clients, so you have scale has clients like such as Hulu, Compass, Zoom, and DoorDash, just for the top of this, top of the list. Um, and what Unoscale does is it optimizes their cloud computing spend with a cloud cost management solution. So does this really, is this really aimed at um, team managers, like you say, or can developers also take this and use it? The developers are absolutely a key part of this. And the way I think about it is that a lot of times you have that central platform engineering team. So if you um, quickly take the case of Hulu, I mean, they have a central team that is providing all the tooling and the core infrastructure to application engineering teams, right? So those, those application engineering teams own product, they own services. And a lot of times the challenge that the platform engineering team uh, faces is that they're not able to help 
the, the teams on the edges, the application owners, the service owners, with respect to how much their services are costing and what, they, what steps they can to, to do to make it more efficient so it helps the company's bottom line. On the other hand, the platform engineering teams, they're getting a lot of pressure from the finance side, sometimes from the CXO, the CEO, on why was they spending so much money and how can they improve the margins and profitability and how can they, how can they drive more efficiencies? Because the, um, the cost of public cloud increasingly is becoming the second biggest line item for a lot of companies after payroll. So it is, it is significant, it can be significant. So those are a, a key ethos for ours is to be able to empower those engineering teams, those developers, those engineering leads that, that own pieces of the infrastructure so that they can spend less time trying to get a PhD in public cloud and all of the various things that are changing at a breakneck pace and focus more on moving the company forward in terms of deploying more software and um, capabilities that, that truly differentiate the, the company. So absolutely, yes, the, the, the developer and uh, engineering teams are a key part of uh, the audience that we serve. Okay, so you're really a next generation cloud uh, service provider, uh, there's no question about it. And so what that's going to mean is that um, you're going to be doing a lot of cloud native type applications, right? Including containers and Kubernetes, uh, you know, scheduling uh, uh, processes. So are you seeing a trend uh, of companies moving more and more to that scheme uh, of cloud uh, management or what? Yeah, so we're seeing increasingly companies, uh, it's a journey. So you, the journey can start with some of the companies in terms of they're in the data center and now they have to take workloads and put it into public cloud. So that in itself can be a challenge. And uh, they, I call it like uh, cloud, uh, cloud, uh, cloud native and then uh, um, I guess, uh, okay, you can sort of edit that. Uh, there are the digital natives and then there are the digital immigrants, if you will meaning that companies that have been in the data center primarily and now they're making the shift to cloud versus some companies that are just born in the cloud. Yeah. But in either case, what we are finding is that in that journey of uh, moving the workers to public cloud, uh, they, the next, next step there is to adopt cloud native technologies like Kubernetes containers, because these technologies make it easy to deploy faster, they make it easy to share infrastructure, and they really, uh, help improve the time to value and the time to deployment. And, and so I think that's great. That's again, good flexibility, good agility. And what the challenge that it causes is that it makes understanding where the money is going even harder because there's a lot of shared cost that's in the mix now. So teams don't really understand what is the cost of my service? or what is the cost of my product? And at a higher level, as you go up the, um, up the ladder, the, uh, the, the CFO is asking questions around business units and products and lines of business and cost centers. So really trying to sift through all of that, the, uh, the, the classic services that you get in AWS and a lot of the cloud native stuff that we increasingly see becomes imperative for, for, um, for companies to have a viable strategy around uh, cloud cost management. To answer your question, we are, we are seeing an increasing number of companies adopting, uh, adop adopting Kubernetes microservices, uh, a lot of the stuff that is defined by the Cloud Native Foundation. Very good. Um, does, um, does Yoda scale break down the cost for each department of a company, for example, their cloud costs and build them or, or keep track of that separately? Uh, for example, if the HR department is using a cloud service as opposed to the engineering department or you know, some other department, does it diversify and separate the bills and itemize everything for everybody inside that company or what? Yeah, so cost attribution, that's what we call it, is a critical part of what we do and to get it right is very, very important. Uh, I, I would say we, are, we have arguably the, one of the most sophisticated cost attribution engines in the industry when it comes to what we do. And, and, and a key part of that is that companies do want to have those answers about, I want to look at my cost by department. I want to look at my cost by workloads. I want to look at co my cost by teams, by owners. 
So every enterprise, every company has their way of looking at their business in the context of their cloud spend. And we help them, uh, we help them a lot in terms of gaining that understanding. But as the saying goes that you can't really improve what you can't measure. And that's a key, key part of that. Okay. And does, does uh, uh, a reporting app or reporting function come with the software also? Yeah, so it's a SaaS service. Uh, we have uh, reporting uh, that you can, you can slice and dice your data many different ways. We also provide uh, abilities to have actionable recommendations that teams can use to um, really reduce their footprint and make, make their workers more efficient. So there's a lot, it's, it's very feature rich and a lot of, a lot of things that we the offer that, that would be required for an enterprise scale cost management product. Yeah, so it's a, it's a platform with a long menu. Can uh, a potential customer pick and choose the features they want and pay for them that way or do they pay for the entire platform? I mean, in general, our uh, pricing is based more on uh, usage. And what we see in reality is that every customer will have a journey on cost management also, right? So the journey for some customers might be they simply just want to understand where the money is going. So that's the cost visibility part. So they would start there and then cloud native could be part of that. Then it would be more around, well, I want some more predictability. I want to be able to forecast. I want to be able to set budgets. Right, and then the, the next phase would be, well, I wanna really do optimizations that are beyond just negotiating economics with the cloud providers, right? So make sure that we're terminating the instances that we need to, we are right-sizing uh, the instances that were over provisioned. So we see this um, crawl, walk, run, and we're able to meet the customer at whatever point that they are and uh, provide a lot of uh, time to value based on that journey. Well, and this, in an increasingly cloud intensive world, uh, you've found, a, I think, a real niche here and a real useful function for cloud developers and for IT managers and developers. And uh, yeah, I bet you once they start using this, they're going to wish they had it before. And they've had it soon, or had it longer because it really solves a lot of, you know, grunge work. I mean, I, you know, um, and, and it's uh, sounds like it's really, really useful. So congratulations to you on this. Thank you, Chris. Yeah, thank really. Appreciate it. Okay, that's the end of our time, Sim. So thank you very much for uh, for giving us an insight into Yoda Scale today. This is our our guest has been Sim Razak, CEO and co-founder of Yoda Scale. Is that? Uh, yotascale.com in case people yes. want to look you up. That's correct. Wild guess. Okay, I thought I would try that. Okay, <laughs> Sim. Spot on. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> thanks very much and good luck to you going forward. Thank you, Chris. Thank you for having me. Okay, and for everybody following along to the end, thank you very much. Have a great rest of your e week. Thanks for joining us on e week e speaks. Go to eweek.com to hear more conversations with IT thought leaders.